let's solve this task in which we have to create n number of threads and we have to take n from user. So let's write code for this. So this is the array for thread IDs and let's make give it the size of the count that you, the, that will be entered by the user. Now let's start creating threads. Then we have to give it a function. We haven't created a function yet. Let's uh, let's let's create a function. Now this is important, we have to pass something to this variable and we may choose not to, if you don't want to pass anything, you can keep it empty like, like this. So make a mega function which accepts nothing, if you want to keep it like this, you can easily write now here and that will be fine, that, that can be done too. But let's not do that, let's pass something so that you can learn better. So let's pass this. I discount right so that we know this is thread number one or thread number two or which thread. So let's pass this. So for that, um, since this is a pointer, right? Since this is a pointer, so we can't pass it, we can't pass it just I, right? I can't just write, I can't, I can't do that. Like, this is the type casting we talked about, and now I can't do this. this. This will be wrong. This is not right. So why? Because for one thing, this is a pointer. I have to pass an address to it. For second thing, I'm type casting a normal variable into a pointer variable. That's not fine. So here I should write address, right? Then it will, then it will be good. And you can check it too. You can see if you want write address repeatedly here, it will throw you an error. So you can see that too. Okay, so this this statement will do. It will create a thread, and also let's let's print something. Okay, why am I writing i plus one? Because it's not so cool to write thread number zero created. I should say thread one created, not zero. 
now the important thing is when you have created the thread, you have joined it by two. And the important thing is you should not join it here at this point. You should not join it here. Why? Because if you join your thread here, what will happen is first iteration of the loop will start, the thread will be created, so thread number one or, or the first thread, thread will be created and then something will be printed on screen with this statement and then your main program, your main thread will be paused at this point. It will be paused here and it will wait for the first thread to join back. So in, in that case, all the threads will not be parallel, right? Threads will be created but they won't be parallel, they won't execute parallelly. What we want is a number of threads to be executed parallelly. We don't want that one thread is created and then it's joined. After that, another thread is created and then joined. So we don't want that. We want parallel execution. That's the reason we won't uh, join the thread here. We will join it in another loop. Now let's write the definition of this function. So what we sent at it was an integer variable. So let's typecast that back. And obviously this time with an integer variable. So here we go. This is our whole program. Let's run it. Okay, one more important thing. To run a program with threads, you have to link the thread library at the time of compilation with this client. So you have to write dash LP thread at the time of compilation. Otherwise it won't run. Let's, let's run it without writing this. Let's see what happens. So you see, without writing dash LP thread, you get an error that is that, that is undefined reference to the thread. Go join and create obviously. That means that it has not linked the library itself. So you have, you have to link that first using this command. So when you do that, you see there is no error. Program has compiled successfully. Now let's run it. Let's create three threads. Now you see we have a problem. The first three statements are right. Thread one, number one created two and three, and the last three are right two. Thread 1, 2, and 3 is run. The, the statements in the middle, we are in thread number 4, 4, and 4. So, three threads are created and all of them are displaying 4. So, what happened is this var, which we typecasted into thread num, which is being displayed here, 
this is displaying the same thing over and over again. It's displaying the same value. Why is that? Because we have passed the address of the value. So since address has been passed, so the address changed later. When the next threads were created, it was changed. So when it was changed, the new value has been printed here. Right? So this is why it happened. Now let's solve this problem. Okay, so this output is correct now. So the solution that I found is I added another integer um, array. I, I integrated another integer array and then I stored the values of i in it. And then I passed that instead of passing the address of i. Because address changes later and that was creating problem because we were dealing with addresses and pointers. So that's what I did. Now let's see the output. First three lines are okay. Uh, thread one is being created first, so that's displayed first, and then two, and then three. Similarly, uh, the main thread is waiting for uh, thread number one for for the first time, so that's displayed here, and it's waiting for thread two, and then three. So so it it's all good. Now let's look at this. Why are we getting this in the reverse order? So thread three uh, has been executed first. This shows that thread thread number 3 has been executed first, then 2, and then thread number 1. What happened is thread 3 got the CPU first. So CPU was allocated to thread number 3 first, and then it was allocated to thread number 2, and then to thread number 1. That's why this is the order. So any of these threads, they are actually running in parallel, right? They are executing parallelly, so any of these threads can get the CPU first. So whichever got the CPU first was displayed here. And in our case, it's 3, and then, then the thread number 2 got it, and then, I think it wasn't that tough. It was, it was easy.